everybody, Dr. Dan here, and today we're going to talk about image generation with artificial intelligence. And, you know, it, it is a, a, a distinct set of uses and some overlap in the tools. And so I think it's worth, I wanted to create a kind of separate video to, to pull this out and address as a separate set of topics. Um, in some ways, the, the image generation, I think, is more successful uh, than the text generation. And in some ways, I think it, it also uh, has more to be desired. So let's kind of break into that. Um, my experience with the AI image generator started um, sometime around 2022. I saw a, um, a viral collection of art pieces that were, it was called something like the last selfies at the end of the world. And so it was all of these, what I thought were paintings um, from the perspective of a camera as if someone were taking a selfie while the world was ending, like apocalyptic nuclear scenarios. And it was quite morbid actually, maybe. And, and I'm not much for horror genre stuff in general, so maybe that's why it kind of left an impression on me. Um, it, was, it was very powerful. But it, it surprised me because, um, you know, after looking at these images and reading a little bit under the article, I was like, oh, this is AI-generated artwork. And that was a moment where I was like, oh, okay, we really did cross a threshold here where these image generators are able to create things that really resemble um, human output, resemble in, in ways like high fidelity, um, resemble in, in the style that can be used. Um, we can see even like the simulation of brush strokes. Uh, if you ask the image generator to include brush strokes and create something in the style of a hand painted um, work. Um, and, and then at the same time, I started seeing headlines that were, you know, the, the, the other side of things, like, well, if someone won a local art contest using an AI-generated image, and that made a lot of people very angry, and maybe rightfully so, right? Um, and then all the similar kinds of questions arising about copyright and these image generation tools uh, in a similar way to the large language models are trained on massive sets of visual information. And I still, you know, personally, I have a hard time kind of teasing that out because in some sense, I, I think, well, you know, the, isn't that what an art student does when they go to a museum and they kind of absorb all of this, you know, studying the great artists and then uh, for some reason, it's easier. I'm I'm not a visual artist, so it's <laughs> maybe it's easier for me to trivialize the. I do little sketches sometimes, and I like promoting, you know, my my kids doing art, and but uh, in some ways, maybe because I have a distance to uh, the visual artistic mediums, it's easier for me to dismiss it or something. But I think it should, it, you know, there are very serious like issues about copyright claims and. Um, originality and what and even what is art and those are not questions I can answer those are wonderful deep profound philosophical questions that uh, probably every person should ask what is what is art and are there fundamental differences here but um, I think in some sense the the success and use cases are, are different right I, the in some ways it's easier to pass off uh, a visual production than a textual production, depending on your reader. I mean, we're all, uh, we, we study writing and, and by that nature we do a lot of reading, so we're not so easily fooled by the text generation. Maybe the general, you know, um, on, only something like 30% of uh, U.S. citizens uh, have a university education, so, you know, is a, is text generated by a large language model harder for a high school student to detect than a college educated adult? Probably. Um, different set of information literacy skills. You know, there, there's that Stanford History Education Group study where something like 96, 97% of high school students in this study 
didn't detect a conflict of interest in a web page that was about global warming and was marked as being written by a fossil fuel company. And I would think if that study were replicated with a college educated population that a, that a much larger percentage of readers would say, hmm, it's an article about fossil fuels written by an oil company. Maybe they have a conflict of interest, right? But for the U.S. high school students that were surveyed, 96, 97% of them didn't detect a conflict of interest. Again, could that be methodology? Could there have been something confusing about the way the survey was worded? Um, maybe, because that, that, that's, that's, that's a really high, right? That's really scary. That's a high number of survey participants that couldn't detect a conflict of interest. There's also the whole Marshall McLuhan thing. Web pages are very persuasive, right? Um, in the sense that for some reason we have this sense that the medium must be credible because it's published, when in reality anything can be, anyone can build a website and publish whatever they like on it. Going a little uh, tangential there, but um, it's to say that I think there's something about the image generation tools that are pretty effective, that they have that kind of first order. In fact, you, I'm seeing them all the time now, output from these AI image generators used as um, like album covers on YouTube music, you know, that kind of like background. If you, if you search like Zen meditation music on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of AI art that's kind of flooding all over. Starting to see it in Google image results, seeing a lot of AI artwork on um, kind of your run of the mill web articles for a headline image. Um, and and I, th I think in some sense it's it, it, for that quick kind of scrolling, for that quick kind of visual impulse, it has that first order, that, that quick impact phenomenological effect on, on the mind. It, it kind of dupes us very easily. So how do you use these things? I'm gonna, I'll leave, leave the thinking for you. I want you to do thinking. I don't want to tell you what to think. These are just some things I've been thinking about in terms of the image generation. Um, how do we do this? I, I used a program called Midjourney which was a little bit complicated because you had to use Discord, which is like a chat application, and then you had to send the, the command through Discord and then return through uh, Discord to get the image. But luckily, where we are right now, we have image generation that's integrated into both ChatGPT and Gemini. As of the very minute I'm recording this video, it's locked behind a paywall in ChatGPT that they use the DALI image generation platform. That you have to pay for. But as of right now that I'm recording this video, and I hope for the remainder of the class, um, the Gemini image generation is going to remain free. And so that's what I would recommend you use for the various, you know, any any type of image generation for this class. I think it's a reliable platform. It's it's high quality in terms of the comparative analysis between um, you know the Gemini image generation compared to Midjourney compared to Dolly. Sure each model is tuned a little differently and if I type the same input on a different image generation platform I'm likely to get different results. However if I type the same input into the same program I'm likely to get different <laughs> results as well. So comparative analysis is actually really difficult to conduct on these tools because you, you, there's such a degree of randomization that's encoded into uh, the programming of these tools that it's difficult to replicate effects. It's, it's one of the problematic, you know, for example, MLA, I, I, that's why they, they suggest including the version name um, of the software you're using if you're citing a generative artificial intelligence because you know the input that you get from a single prompt on GPT 3.5 would be very different if you typed it into GPT 2.0 um, but then again even within 3.5 or 4.0 within that the same model you can get different results it actually should um, I'm, I'm confused when I don't get a novel response 
if I type in the same prompt twice, as if there's a kind of distinct and excessive similarity, because there should be a degree of novelty um, in, in each instance and in every you know, window um, that you open up, every new chat that you have. Um, anyway, there's some other, I don't want to go too far off topic here. So your approach, prompt engineering for image generation, very similar to text and you can be conversational. The kind of introductory uh, image generation prompt I would recommend trying is a command like generate an image of X and just start there. You know, try that. Generate an image of a dragon and see what happens. And then see, does that match what you were thinking in your head? It, it probably won't. So then I would, you know, then have a little conversation. You can say, do it again, but I want the dragon to be on top of a mountain, sitting on top of a mountain or something. And yeah, I like that, you know, but do it again, but a fire coming out of its mouth. And that's that kind of recursivity. You can continually do these revisions and, and engineer your prompt until you get precisely what it is that you want. Or maybe you have to start over. Maybe you want your dragon to be flying or the wings need to be bigger or it should be a different color or maybe, right, the biases are really interesting there because uh, all, almost all the time it will produce an image of a Western dragon rather than um, what's typically associated with the, um, the more elongated Eastern dragon. Um, I'm getting pretty nerdy now. I don't know a whole lot about the, the, the... There's actually, there's wonderful whole books written about dragon mythology and the different types of them and uh, where they come from and the, the quite fascinating. Um, anyway, there, there are biases right there, right, in, in terms of it, the programs are more likely to, to show a Western dragon than an Eastern dragon. Interesting, right? Open for critique. So very conversational with your prompts, and the more detail you have, um, the better. It's a little different than the text prompt engineering because you don't necessarily have to have a role. You know, the role of the AI tool here is to is as artist, you know, um, but genre definitely, and style is incredibly important here too. You know, ask your AI image generator. Say you're in Gemini. You know, you can do this right in Gemini in the same window that you would do text input. So you don't have to do anything special to have it generate images for you. Um, you know, generate a painting right, or generate a photograph, what's the medium, um, and you can be even more specific than that, you know, in the style of Van Gogh, and, or in the style of Starry Night by Van Gogh, you get very specific, or specific color palettes, or, uh, you know, sp specific perspectives, or angles, or, or lighting, um, specific canvas sizes, right, by default, most of them will produce just this kind of boring there we go. <laughs> Boring kind of one by one aspect ratio canvas. It's like a certain number of pixels by the exact same number of pixels, a little square. But, you know, for example, you could ask it to do a, a, a larger image or specific pixel width and height. If you needed to generate a, a certain size image, say for a banner image on a website or a, a blog, right? If you need, or a profile picture for a specific website that has tailored dimensions that you need to adjust. Uh, of course, you can always crop images down using Photoshop, Canva, whatever your tool of choice is. But um, more and more features are always being added, things like revising certain areas of the image. I don't know if Gemini has that now. Uh, Midjourney has a feature where you can expand the canvas size after the image has already been generated. Um, generally, how these work is you, you input the text prompt and you, the output is an image. Usually there are variations. Um, Gemini does this right now. This could change at some point. Midjourney also does this right now. Um, Dolly does this. You, know, you, you input the text. The output is usually four images. So it's like here's a s selection of possible outputs based on your input and then you choose from, okay, I like variation one, V1, V2, V3, or V4. 
And then from there, you can say, okay, do this again, but create four variations of that variation. And it's this kind of branching recursive um, process, right? Where you're, you're going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole until you're getting precisely what you want. Sometimes you need to start over from scratch though, right? If, um, if the output you get, you know, I was doing this a lot for like character creation for some of my, my self-published fantasy works. I've talked about this already, but mice and squirrels with daggers and swords and capes and kind of silly, but it's fun for me. Um, you know, doing some character generation. If a, if a, the AI tool outputs an image of a mouse and it has two tails, it's not likely that in one of those recursive revisions that it's going to eliminate that tail at some point. It has no consciousness on, through which it's trying to edit the image. It's just adding certain degrees of randomness to what's already there to create variations. Um, so if, you, if there's some fatal flaw in the original output, you're, you're probably not going to be able to work through a revision process with the chatbot to fix whatever fatal flaw is there present already in the image. That's about all I could really say about image generation just to get you started is it's conversational. Generally, the more information, the better. Like, and I know we're not, I'm not a visual artist here, so you know, we're experimenting. But the, the more you can, more information you can supply about like the size of the canvas you want, the size of the image, the style of the image. Is it a, a painting with brush strokes? Is it a photorealistic photograph? Um, you know, is it a watercolor? Is it like cartoon art, web art? If, can you even specify further, like, can you name a specific artist or designer or painter whose style you want to try to emulate? Um, can you talk about the action or the motion of the image? Can you, with great detail, describe precisely what it is that you want to see? And you're more likely to get a better result the more detail that you include generally. If you have a very short prompt on an image generation, you're, it's kind of like, let's see what happens, right? You say, I, I want a, a mouse, and it could be something very interesting that, that you get, or it could just be, eh, that looks like a mouse, right? Um, sometimes short prompts yield interesting results too, but generally, the more context, the more information, the more very specific information you can provide, it's going to match better the, the image in your head. And isn't that really, you know, as, as we're working through these things, we're realizing sometimes they produce interesting outputs um, from degrees of randomization, but if, if we really go in with a specific purpose in mind, uh, we can tweak that prompt in such a way that we can get something that resembles the, the mental image in which we approach the task with. That's going in with a purpose, right? We, as writers, we're, we're often thinking about, okay, if I'm going to write something, what is the central purpose of that document going to be? What, it is, what is it that I ultimately must, or what I ultimately am seeking to convey? If we go in with AI with a similar um, with a distinct purpose in mind, I have already conceived of something. Now, can I generate it? Um, you know, that's very useful. On the flip side, I would say that there, there's a certain extent to which I've enjoyed using the image generation tools in a kind of daydream-like therapeutic sense. I've, I've found it really interesting to say you know, um, generate an image of a castle on top of a rock and with misty mountains in the background and just going, oh, you know, that's, that's interesting. You know, could that, could that uh, inspire a story? Could that inspire a place, you know, that, that becomes uh, integral to something you're working on? Could it help you just visualize the fictional worlds you're building? Um, that's a kind of interesting use case for these AI tools is that spontaneous procedure, almost a, almost a procedurally generated fictional universes. Um, could, you, could you yield some interesting results or inspire a kind of invention in that way? I found that to be fruit, fairly fruitful in 
experimenting with image generators and kind of, uh, I mean, they do such, the, the landscapes in particular look fairly convincing, mountain ranges and rivers and streams and waterfalls because they're, they're trained on so much of that data. Um, and then sometimes you get very alien looking worlds as well, which I find interesting. Okay, I try not to get these, make these videos too long. Just wanted to give you some real, real basic kind of uh, tips for getting started with image generation with AI tools. Don't be afraid of it. Um, don't be afraid of them. They're, they're fairly user friendly. You're going to learn as you go. And I hope that you will get some interesting and intriguing results. And I hope you will also reflect on, um, you know, some of these key issues, particularly, uh, you know, parallel issues that, that are going on with the text generation, like the ethics, the environmental impacts, the copyright issues, the, um, you know, originality and, and heart and art of it. Is, is that at stake here too? Um, there are some really interesting parallel kinds of questions and some unique questions that, that come up with the, the image generation, different kinds of biases. It's a, you know, for example, you can produce very uh, convincing photorealistic uh, misinformation, disinformation using these AI generation tools. There was a viral, the Pope wearing a um, kind of luxury puffy jacket someone was circulating. Um, it looked like a real photograph, right? So that the caliber and precision of the image generation tools has, has reached uh, an ability to produce almost photorealistic or convincing photorealistic uh, images. So something to be aware of. All right, got to cut myself off. Could talk all day about these things, but have fun and good luck.